I want to ask you just in general then in terms of uh, if you can give a kind of an average day but I want to split this into two points so an average day during the season but then also because you I presume you're not go you're not there on match days like a you know a traditional performance analyst there so what what can you say what would you do on a typical week Sam like what would you, and who would you be conversing with who would you be working with on a on an average week um so I'll, I'll start off by saying the off season the off season has been very busy for us in fact it's probably the most busy time in the year for us this yeah. is when we will spend the time to either revisit previous models we'll check they're still producing the outputs that we like um are they still in tune do we need to make any changes to them and then there's the revisit in a report so is there any additional pieces that we need to add um is there something that the coach really wants to see this season or are we changing to a different game model? Can we align our reports to really provide insights in that sense? Otherwise, throughout the season, it's how can we converse, or me personally, um, it's how can we converse with the recruitment guys to get them to be looking at players in the right places, um, whether that's filling holes from a start of the funnel, as I mentioned before, or in the latter stages and a deep dive on these These are the players that would that have been identified. Okay, well, now I will piece together, here's some data sound bites that are, this is assessments against what we've currently got in the building. This is their projections. How do they fit? This is their profile. Um, similarly, just pulling and creating all that information together so that we can give the scouts the most time back possible so they can spend time looking at players and trying to ID them, but also following up on targets. Yeah. Uh, so just because you, you mentioned scouts again there, I just want to flick back to, I think you mentioned it, around your Rotherham position in terms of aligning the scout, like the data collection, because at the end of the day, our scouts are, they're, they're out there, the data collectors at the end of the day, like they're watching. So just, if you can, Sam, just expand a little bit on that kind of alignment. So were you kind of being specific with the scouts exactly what you wanted? Did they have a set report that they, they would fill in looking at specific things that you would have set for that particular position? How, how did that look? Yeah, so touch on the Rotherham piece, it was exactly that. It was, we designed the player profiles early on with the position groups in mind. So how does a wing back look? How does a full back look? How does a centre forward look? And then we had very uh, bespoke, but also broad enough pieces that we could get nuance through the report. So we want to assess pace, for instance, for a centre forward. Well, then the scouts would uh, have a score between... One five, for instance, and then they would write a piece about that, or there'll be a, a free text box for them to write this information down, anything that they noticed in there that's particular to the player, and then a summary of, say, the physical category. Then this would move on to the technical stuff, and then also the out of possession and leadership, for instance. We'd want to capture as much as we can around the players, and then for me, I would then check that against the data. Okay, the pieces that we're able to align and we're able to assess uniformly. Well, how do the scouts view them? So the in-possession, out-possession. Are the data and the scouts aligned? Because in my role at Rotherham, we weren't fortunate to be able to have skill corner. We couldn't have the physical side of things as well. So this was very much more on the scouts' expertise. Mm. So we can align two pieces, but we can't align that one. Um, so it's about creating as much alignment as you can so that you're fact-checking yourself uh, and decisions aren't being made on on a whim or um, someone really likes this player and there's this bias creeping in because that's the, the big thing as well, trying to alleviate as much bias in the process as possible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Because I suppose there's obviously when you say kind of what does the typical fullback look like? I think people will think straight off in terms of their, you know, do they, do they get forward? Do they make crosses? Do they, you know, do they, but then there's also things like, you know, what are their, what's their age, like what, how many appearances they made and all that sort of stuff. But then also on the top of that is, are they even in budget? Are they even available? So there's lots of different things yeah. that can kind of play, they're all at play at the same time. Which is, that's why recruitment is so difficult. Exactly that. And I think the, the way that we put it together was to be able to try um, derive the, the nuanced positions that players would play. You're going to have players that are a high and wide wing back that maybe you're even operating like a left winger at times. So you need to be able to give the scout free text to differentiate that person from someone that's playing as a fullback yeah. if you're looking on a team sheet they're going to be lined up the exact same way but we know data can't capture everything perfectly and sometimes you're at the mercy of providers being able to to capture that as well so to have eyes on and use other tools as well to assess players roles um that's important and you sort of said it yourself there you have some fullbacks the, the general notion is okay i want him to get high i want him to put crosses in well 
we might call that an attacking fullback. Yeah. We might also have another fullback profile that's an inverted fullback. We want someone who's comfortable in possession. We've got now got a defensive one. We've now also got a balanced one, someone who can get forward and get back. So you can start to associate these attributes to players. So you might say uh, someone like Luke Shaw is a balanced fullback, can do a bit of everything. Um, whereas you can then say someone else like a Kyle Walker is more of a, a stopper. That's mm -hmm. where he excels. So you can start to derive these nuances um, and use that in your scouting process, but also the data to really bring the two together 